The solar system is spinning and acting as a force. The galaxy is spinning and acting on it, pushing in. So if you decouple from them, then you have no force pushing you through, and you can essentially travel instantaneously to anywhere if you have the right frequency. It's all about frequency. If your past hasn't happened and your future doesn't exist, we have all been lied to. Time is perhaps the biggest magic trick that we all blindly believed in. So it wouldn't show visible means of propulsion just like these UAP, unidentified aerial phenomena, don't show visible means of propulsion. They don't have a heat signature, no, so they'd be operating on something entirely different that's allowing it to propel. And then you could figure out how to manipulate that. Take the frequency of the Earth and find out what's the equal and opposite tell to him that's exactly the premise that new discoveries made by the James Webb Telescope are pushing forward. You'll be shocked to know that the biggest name in the scientific community is confirming what we have suspected for decades. Time doesn't exist. Join us as we explore why Taryn Howard believes that the James Webb Telescope has proved us wrong. Time is a controversial glance at the nearest clock. What you're looking at is one of the most controversial, most disputed, and most complex notions of physics time. In the study of space and matter, time is by far the most challenging subject in science. It feels as real as it is abstract. For us, time is like a river. It flows, it moves inexorably forward. Time also has a direction. It always moves forward, unless and until you have stumbled upon a time machine. It also has an order. One event happens after the other. You can't skip one event for another. And of course, time sets have a duration too. It is a quantifiable period between events. Your moment is your present, which is very real. As space puts it, Time seems to be the universal background through which all events proceed, such that order can be sequenced and durations measured. But what if we tell you that everything we have described isn't real and it is just in your head? Or perhaps it is a matter of linguistics. Anything future or past tells us that time is not always attainable. What we have is the privileged present. For decades, Scientists have been asking if time represents the reality of the physical world or if it is a mere artificial construct that we have believed to make sense of our reality. Within this argument, you'll see that time is a social construct too. We believe that the devastating great wars from the 1900s are done and dusted for, since they are a matter of the past. However, scientists theorize that time may not work with the levels of continuity and discontinuity that we have assumed. The categorical existence of time or its smooth unity without parts and the happening as we know today are perhaps non-existent. But we also can't deny that the passage of time isn't the most basic tenet of human experience. Take any emotion or moment. Everything is destined to slip in the moment of time. This is perhaps the most intimate experience we have with space or mass when time slips through our fingers to initiate some sort of transformation of events. It seems like a flight of an arrow that takes you from the bearings of the past to the future. For some scientists, it is comparable to an ever-rolling stream bearing our present but taking us to some sort of perspective spatial quantity. Let's suppose that time slips by when a person is grieving. You experience loss and over time, your loss feels less devastating than the moment it occurred. We attribute this experience to the passage of time meaning that time as a physical quantity has passed enough to give you space to come to terms with the loss. But here's the thing. There might be no scientific basis for the passage of time at all. Shocked yet? The essentiality of time, no matter how many metaphors we use to describe the passage of time, there's something devastating about it too. You see, nothing in the known physics can explain the reality of the passage of time so far. Even after spending decades on the scientific notion of time, we haven't found any scientific proof that there's a tangible basis for the passage of time or its flow from the past to the future. If anything, physics tells us the exact opposite. According to physicists, time doesn't flow or can't flow because it isn't merely real. Everything you see on your clock or the way you conceptualize your life in a sequence of events has no scientific proof. It is all a big misconception. This is an idea that many scientists and theorists have been embarking on for years. Even big names like Taryn Howard have said something about this controversial notion. But then why is it that we hardly grapple with these hard-hitting questions? Why is it that we have deluded ourselves into believing that our present is privileged? When scientists say everything is happening at once, to be fair, the science of time is visceral in a moment. 
If that moment is real, everything changes for you. Turns out our past and future don't exist, at least not as scientific metrics. We have always heard that time is fluid, and well, that's because big names in the scientific community keep reinforcing that idea. What's really happening is a matter of scientific legacy. Once again, there's a stark split and a grand debate. One faction of science perceives time as we understand it, or if they don't fully buy into the idea, they are at least keeping up with the appearance. Then there are scientists like Howard who believe time isn't fluid in the way we understand it. It hardly exists. For factions who also believe in the latter, NASA is perhaps the quintessential name, thanks to the mastery of the James Webb Telescope, an instrument so powerful that it can look into the history or the past of our universe when it was in a very nascent stage. But if time is happening all at once, what is the telescope peeking into? That's the question of the hour that has shocked the scientific community. Turns out time isn't of the essence at all. In our routine life, we divide time into three distinct parts. The past, our present, and the future. This is how we linguistically understand our lives, too. The very structure of our language revolves around this focal distinction. Our reality is our present. The past is the very slip of time we just talked about, and the future is, well, the thing that will come, and we aren't aware of all the details about this understanding. Scientific American says, In this simple picture, the now of our conscious awareness glides steadily onward, transforming events that were once in the unformed future into the concrete but fleeting reality of the present, and then relegating them to the fixed past. Well, even outside the scientific notion, this is just common sense to us. But it actually stands in contradiction with modern physics. Even Albert Einstein called the past, present, and the future stubborn illusions. This is where the special theory of relativity takes root too. According to the famous physicist, time is relative. In very simple words, the rate at which time passes depends on your frame of reference. Two people in two different frames would experience time differently. For instance, they might not agree on how long an event took place or the duration of it. The very measurement of a second can vary too. One observer's second can be longer or shorter than the second of another observer's, depending on their frame. So yeah, even our simultaneity is relative. If Einstein's words are anything to go by, there's no significance to the present moment because, well, depending on your frame, your present can differ drastically too. Let's say there is some hypothetical alien civilization that's closely watching everything that's happening on Earth. When they ask the question, what is happening on Earth right now? You actually can't get a conclusive or definite answer. That's because there's a massive distance between the two planets, up to about 20 light minutes. Whatever is happening on Earth, which is the information, can't travel to Mars at lightning speed, right? Knowledge would not travel faster than light. So whatever a Martian would see happening on our home planet has already happened. The visual that is being seen is not happening in the same instant. The event would only make itself apparent when the light has had a chance to pass between the planets. This phenomenon, which is observable, changes everything we know about time. Considering Einstein's theory of relativity, what you infer as your present depends on your velocity too. What you can observe on Earth from an alien station on Mars is different from what an astronaut flying past the planet near the speed of light would see. Depending on the astronaut's velocity and direction, they could be witnessing something different altogether. Yep, everything is relative. Such discrepancies in physics then force us to look at time in particular, the absoluteness of the present. When we use the words instant or now, whose present are we actually referring to? When two bodies are in relative motion, their judgment of an event could vary, and that conceptually is very disastrous. One's future has already become the past, and one's past is another's future. How do we fix this problem then? Well, in this scenario, scientists assume that the past and the future are fixed. According to Scientific American, this idea is called block time, where physicists prefer to think of time as laid out in its entirety, a timescape analogous to a landscape with all past and future events located there together. Our present holds no importance in this block, and neither does any system of events that would turn our future into the present. In short, time doesn't flow. It is not fluid, and it definitely isn't of the essence. Then why is NASA hellbent on proving otherwise? Looking back into time when the James Webb Telescope finally became operational, the space agency had promised a lot. 
It seemed like the telescope was going to give us a glimpse of the universe when it was just a baby. Indeed, the telescope has exceeded everyone's expectations so far. The very distant pictures of galaxies and stellar formations from about 13 billion years ago are striking enough to make anyone question the origin of our universe and the time it came into being. And here's where everything changes. Thanks to this technology, the information we are receiving is both shocking and nerve-wracking. If we go by Einstein's theory and believe that everything we perceive is happening all at once, how is the telescope receiving information about the past? The idea that our past doesn't exist means that there is no physical distance between us and these galaxies. And if there's no distance and we are witnessing everything simultaneously, the telescope will either be peering into the past that we actually have lived. So why are we receiving this information? How does this make any sense? It is shocking because on the one hand, scientists have believed that time doesn't exist. On the other hand, this technology has allowed us to reach a point where we can actually see some tangible information about the past. If the time we know is an illusion and this distance has nothing to do with time, how is the telescope receiving information? The farthest galaxy that the telescope has detected is 13.5 billion years old. It has detected about 12 billion years old supermassive black holes and 11 billion years old mergers of galaxies. But what's even more intriguing is the image of Andromeda that the telescope has captured. In an astounding discovery, the image is of a star that lies about 28 billion light years away from us. But the telescope can see it because of gravitational lensing. A massive object between the star and the telescope bends the light and makes it visible to the telescope, making it the most distant star we've ever witnessed. These images dating back to the earliest period of the universe are perplexing for scientists too. While scientists have argued that time doesn't exist for decades, the telescope has somehow managed to grasp it. NASA still isn't backing off from the notion that time is relevant. The basis of this argument is the Big Bang theory that talks about the earliest explosion after which the universe began to expand and form the galaxies. The concept of time has long fascinated and perplexed humanity, from ancient philosophers to modern physicists. It serves as a fundamental framework for understanding our existence and the universe around us. Yet, as our scientific understanding deepens, questions about the nature of time become increasingly complex and provocative. One intriguing perspective comes from theories in quantum mechanics, where time is considered differently than in classical physics. In quantum theory, time is often seen as a parameter rather than a fundamental dimension. Events are described probabilistically, and the concept of now can blur into a superposition of possibilities. This challenges our intuitive sense of time as a linear progression from past to future. Moreover, the notion of time's arrow which suggests an irreversible flow from order to disorder entropy, faces scrutiny in quantum contexts. Quantum processes often exhibit time reversal symmetry at the fundamental level, implying that microscopic physical laws may not inherently distinguish between past and future. This contrasts sharply with our everyday experience, where time's passage seems inexorable and asymmetrical. In cosmology, the study of the universe's origins and evolution time assumes an even grander role. The Big Bang Theory posits a beginning to our universe, marked by an explosion of space-time itself. However, theories like loop quantum gravity or eternal inflation propose scenarios where time extends infinitely, perhaps with multiple universes or cyclic patterns of creation and destruction. The concept of a block universe, where past, present, and future coexist as a fixed entity, challenges our conventional understanding of temporal flow. This model suggests that all events, past, present, and future, already exist in a static four-dimensional space-time continuum. This view finds some support in Einstein's theory of general relativity, where space-time curvature dictates the paths of matter and light. In the realm of philosophy, thinkers have long debated whether time is a fundamental aspect of reality or a construct of human perception. Phenomenologists argue that our experience of time, including its passage and our awareness of it, shapes our subjective reality more than any objective measurement. This subjective experience complicates scientific efforts to unify time with other fundamental forces, such as gravity and quantum mechanics. Ultimately, the exploration of time transcends scientific inquiry and enters the realm of existential contemplation. 
prompts us to reconsider our place in the cosmos and the nature of reality itself. As technologies like the James Webb Telescope continue to push the boundaries of observational astronomy, they offer tantalizing glimpses into the universe's distant past, challenging us to rethink our understanding of time and existence.